my name's Sean Charrington Wright, and I'd like to invite you to a wonderful world of watercolour. In this DVD, we're going to be looking at lots of different elements that make up great watercolour painting. From simplifying shapes, to unifying the elements, tonal values. We're going to learn how to paint effective figures and hone in on that one key focal point. We're going to be looking at foregrounds and middle distances, big, small, cool, warm, lost and found, all the opposites. We're also going to be looking at colour harmony and shadows and counter change. I'm even going to show you how to drop in water to make your paintings sparkle with life. I'm going to be painting mainly wet into wet and there's going to be some some dry brushwork in there as well. I'm going to show you how to create recession and economy of brush stroke. We're also going to be aiming for translucent washes that sparkle. I'm going to be using my fingers and finally we'll create those highlights that make the painting lift and give impact. Throughout this DVD I'm going to be sharing hints and tips and advice that I've gleaned over the last 35 years plus. And hopefully by the end of it you'll have learned loads and had great fun as well. For this DVD I've used a sketch from the Amalfi Coast. It's a beach scene, it's very simple, it's got some key elements in there, big shapes, small shapes, some figures to give movement. I've treated it very loosely in many ways but there are, there's some fine details and, and I want to show you how that you can pull all these things together to create really truly impacting paintings that have mood, atmosphere and bags of light. I hope my passion and enthusiasm is going to rub off on you as well and you'll be inspired to create your own works of art that you can feel truly satisfied about. For me it's all about sharing information, giving people the means to create truly wonderful watercolours, work that you'll be proud of, work that glistens and glitters with life, work that makes you want to grab your brushes and paints and take the opportunity to put that paint onto paper and let it live. So let's get to it then. I've been creating watercolours now for over 35 years and I'd like to share with you my experience, hopefully my advice, but most of all my enthusiasm for this fantastic medium of watercolour. So the sketch, the most important part of the painting is the beginning, it's where it all starts and sometimes we can go into lots and lots of detail, we need to do that and other times not too much. I tend not to do too many outlines, I tend to sort of work up a sketch a little bit more than that and, and within the painting all of that's going to vanish so we don't need to worry about going too detailed. Um, we're going to begin then, here's our sketch, we're going to begin by painting the sky. Now of course the sky is the most important. Uh, element within a landscape, um, especially so I think when you're painting a beach scene. So I'm laying in a liquid wash of uh, cerulean, cerulean blue, and I'm just going to bring that down close to the horizon. Now you can see I'm just messing around really. I'm going to it's getting this piece right. We need to make sure this is light. We've got it too dark. Here we go. Bringing in some raw sienna as well to bring that down to the horizon. Um, I will add a little bit of water in a second because that's just a bit too, just a bit too much that one on the right hand side there. Um, and using that same mix just to bring it down and establish um, across onto the castle and the rocks on the left hand side. I'm just going to let that blend and bleed its way down as well, which is always a good thing to do. Let things kind of paint themselves a bit. 
Just let gravity do the work. And then I'm going to work a little bit on the castle and rocks and as and, uh, looking at these just as simple shapes, it's just a straight wash. Um, using that one big brush, the mop brush. Uh, it's a size 12 mop brush, this one. Great for this kind of, this size of painting, which is a 22 by 15 uh, inches, that is. Some um, half imperial in the old money. That's just keeping it liquid. The great thing about this mop brush is its economy of stroke because it just holds so much pigment water in the belly um, of the brush. You can just bring in these great big washers. So I'm just tilting the board to bring uh, some of that back in. So the um, cad oranges run back into the cerulean there. I think I may have said raw sienna earlier, that's a mistake. I do apologize. Get my colors mixed up there. So a little bit more work on this uh, skyline. Just just bringing in a touch of, um, of water. You've got to time this right because if you bring in too much water, it can just m make the paint bloom around. Um, you don't want that. I'm now going to work on the ocean and this is um, cerulean blue again. Uh, just the feather touches with this brush across, working from right to left and left to right. Just going across. Um, you just notice the motion. We need some uh, small chinks of paper left to uh, just signify some uh, some white horse, some some waves coming in. Now I'm going to bring in much stronger uh, mixture in there, and this is a turquoise coming in, a little bit too strong actually. But we can we can let the um, let the paint do its own thing, and, and that'll blend and bleed away. We can sort that out as we go along. So just there we go. Just take that up. So it's going from light to dark. If you notice from the top there, light to dark, blending it down. tickling in with a brush. You can see it's very wet wash. It's important to keep things nice and moist and uh, got that line running there. Uh, just bringing in a bit of dry brush there. So I'm now going to establish the foreground beach and I'm going to mix up slightly stronger uh, cad orange. I'm touching some cad red as well as, as we go in. Uh, and I just want to bring that out on this right hand side. Go, to, I think this, I don't want the C down that far, so I'll, I'll mess with that in a second. Again, it's starting uh, up there in the middle of, of the paper, lighter and coming down, tonally darker, so more pigment down here. That, that already is creating the illusion of, of recession there. I'm just going to kind of brush out some of this um, C and just make a beach in there. Just feather touches on this. Don't want much more than feather touches. It's important to let the paint do what it wants as well. You can see I've let that bleed down. I'm just going to strengthen up a little bit with a little touch of cad red, cad orange. Um, bottom foreground. There's a nice, nice illusion of recession going on there. You can see the sky, the, the, the cad orange is, is blending into the cerulean. Now we need to unify uh, some of the key shapes. So I'm just going to uh, fiddle along the horizon. Um, this is an ultramarine. Just touching it in. It's actually ultramarine and a touch of burnt sienna. Um, just wanted to create a little bit more variation. It was a little bit too the same. There we go, that's much better. Just warm the sea up a bit. We've got cool colours and warm colours going on there. It's cool in the sky and warm on the horizon and cool in the sea and warm in the foreground. At the moment, if we look at shapes, we've got some, well, basically three shapes in a way. 
three sections. Got the beach, got the sea, and we've got the sky. And on the left hand side, we haven't really established anything. There's just an initial wash there on the left uh, where the castle and box are. I'm going to work on some highlights and uh, it's just dabbing out some of the uh, paint really around where I want, want the main focal point to go just there where the boats are going to be and there's going to be um, some kind of luminescent glow around um, the two foreground figures although they're very important in the, in the painting they're not the most important the most important is that uh, there's going to be a boat down there uh, with a couple of figures but we're going to just start to draw some of the paint across everything should be kind of joined if you can and we're just dragging out some of the sea color bringing in this slight touch of uh, burnt sienna and cerulean blue uh, i'm just trying to firm up this it's kind of bringing in, in, in some shadow work really it's kind of firm it up a bit And I want to add some tonal value, in other words, the moment everything's quite flat and similar in tone, I'm going to bring up this and work up the castle side, you'll see the way that works. Again we've got the uh, cat orange, and there's a touch of cerulean going to be added in there as well. I kind of see the, the castle and the rocks below it. And the beach kind of unifying, gelling together, but like easily going from one to the other. We're just going to treat these as a shape. I'm not going to treat them as, as, as objects. I'm not doing any drawing in here. I've already done my drawing. So you can see I'm strengthening that. It's tonally darker. And there you go, it's sort of starting to stand out a bit now. I bring in some stronger. Uh, mixture over the, the area of the rocks there, and kind of unifying the gaps where the where the boats are going to be. There's um, there's four boats there. There's the three in the distance, and, and this one with the two figures in the middle. And of course, we need to make sure the shapes are, are simple. We're going to simplify those shapes. Bring in some warmer mixture, this is burnt sienna, with a touch of turquoise in here, a little piece of ultramarine, a little dip of ultramarine in there, a little tip on the paintbrush. Um, that should just bring these rocks up even more. This is all very luminous and all very wet paint going wet into wet at the moment, just working fashion and letting the paint kind of bleed itself in and create these, these nice sort of granulating effects. And now we're going to go on to the focal point. The main point of interest, that one key focal point. But before we get there, we're just going to bring in some shadow colour, which is um, going to use across here as well. It's ultramarine and burnt sienna. A touch of alizar and crimson in there to warm it up, but not much. And we're just going to guide it. We're going to kind of suggest tickle the brush in if you can see. And then let it blend and bleed into the colour that's already there. So you can see the focal point boat, uh, it's a cerulean boat with a, uh, a shadow underneath. I'm going to soften that shadow in a second because that's bugging me. Get back there in a minute. It's clear water we're putting in here, um, just so things can blend and bleed again. It's from the rocks and the castle is going to blend into there. We're kind of making sure the shapes don't stand out on their own, that they're kind of unified together. That's the idea. we're using these, um, I'll just work on the focal point, I'll come back to that point in a second. Um, a little bit more work on this focal point. If you can 
see what I'm doing there, it's just bringing a stronger mixture. And then some water gone in there, if you notice in the pot, I was just taking some water out, and just bringing that across the bottom shadow so it blends a bit. So we're going to work some more on the focal point and I'm going to work on the two little figures um, that are next to the boat there. I'm going to pop in some Cad Red. I think I'll also pop in um, some Ultramarine and there might be a touch of turquoise on the right hand figure. Now Red is a great foil. Um, it's great for getting the eye to, to go uh, to the focal point so there you go that's why we've got it in there. Yellow also works really well in, this, in that connection. So there's one of the little figures popped in, just by the top, just the tip of the uh, mop brush, very, very pointed mop brush. We'll think about what to do next. There we go, back in again, just mixed up some more paint. A few little squiggles. And they're done. Just prime my fingernail there to drag out across the boat. A little highlight. Might work on that a bit later with with a touch of white. Chinese white. Remember you want your darkest dark and your lightest light where your focal point is. So we're, we're going to simplify these boats that are in the distance. Just bringing in some uh, darker cerulean for these boats. Just going to touch that in and let it blend and bleed. See they're just feather touches again. In the direction of the hull of the boat. Just touching that and see, seeing the state of play there, that uh, you don't want to be running th things in too wet if uh, it's not the right time. I'm going to work on bringing up some of these masts. This mixture is um, ultramarine with some burnt sienna. Sienna there than ultramarine. Try to keep this this whole mix on this painting down just to seven colours. Bring on the finger. Just suggest. There we go. Just trying to suggest what shapes in there. Now the bit that frightens lots of people, but I absolutely love it. It's going to drop in some water. This one's a simple one there. We're just dropping in some water to blend and bleed things together. So I'm joining the boats to the rocks with water. Things just mixed down. You don't want to be, be going in too hard on this. It's just really feather touches because you want the paint to, to uh, do its own thing and gravity to do its own thing. You don't want to be, a watercolor hate to be pushed about too much. It likes feather touches, and we're gonna gonna work now um, down here on some more shadows of, of this focal point boat. Okay, I'm just touched in the, some water, clean water, and just dragged out uh, the shadow. It's still not blurred enough for me. We'll come back to that in a second. I'm gonna gonna paint in these these. Uh, Kind of the secondary figures. Um, two figures here walking. Again, we've got red. And I think we'll go for the same com color combination red and blue, either side. Just the cat red. And on the other side, I think I'll do an ultramarine figure on there. 
There's not going to be, you know, these are just suggestions. There's not going to be any any detail at all. Just blocking in shapes. And also add a few shadows in there as well to, to uh, help with creating form. In other words, that's the sort of solidity of them. But because they're, you know, just they're part of the picture. They're not the main part of the picture. They, they're important to it. And because of the way we're painting here, um, with impressionistic suggestion, we're not gonna, you know, we're not doing a portrait. Can keep this very loose. I'm gonna bring down the shadows as well, and I want the the legs to. We want the movement in there with the legs. Um, it's great with dry brush stroke; always works well. But I want to keep this kind of um, blurry because the sharp sharper aspect of, of the painting is where the focal point is the two little figures I don't want too much sharpness here because otherwise it will compete with um, with the little figures in the boat so you, you know you're thinking about how it's going to work and then I want to try and get lots of movement in on these figures by um, I might have to add some white at the end there at the moment they're, they're kind of sharp I'm going to have to blur those out a little bit otherwise they compete too much it's atmospheric, moody uh, painting. You need lots of um, areas that are kind of out of focus, blurred, you're wet into wet, and then some sharpness in your focal point. So I'm going to work a little more on on the shadow of these figures, give them form. It's just a darker mix of, of what I already had there with a touch of Alizar and Crimson. And while I'm at it, I'll use some of that paint over here. In. They mix, some gentle touches, in a boat, useful sort of shadow colour. Suggestion of a boat over there that the light's hit. Not seeing too much detail at all. It's all about the atmosphere of this painting. This is you know, this is key in creating atmosphere. You really, really, really need this to make it work. If everywhere is sharp, you don't get that atmosphere. You just get a sharp light, which is fine. There we go. I'm going to bring in some clean water, and that's why I want that, just to drag that shadow out. Clean water, blur it away. Feathering, they call it. Kind of feathering uh, clean water, so it soft, softens the edges. While we're at the shadows, we've got um, Ultramarine and Alizar and Crimson again here. I'm going to bring that in. So the shadows are suggesting that the light is coming from the right-hand side. Don't mix the, the colours up in these shadows, you don't want them all same mixture. Got to touch in a little bit more ultramarine as well. I'm worried about the legs. Um, kind of some ultramarine and burnt sienna on this. The movement of the figures. Second red figure there at the moment, the leg just doesn't look right. I'll have to sort that out. It's not good. It looks like he's got a wooden leg at the moment. Want to get rid of that? No offense to people with wooden legs. But there we go. We can take some of that out and create movement with a fingernail just by scratching it out of it. I'm going to still work on that. So we've got the key elements, they're all there. You've got the cast on the rocks, joined to the boat to the back, linked with a shadow, coming down to the, um, the two figures in the main focal point. Just keep 
villain here and then these two figures that are walking towards the guys in the boat and everything else very simple just shapes shadows do play a great part in this painting and I need to to bring some up over here on the rock I said that I was just going to use seven colours first, but actually cheated. Brought in an old uh, burnt umber as well. Uh, needs that to warm that up in here. It's actually eight, not seven. Warm colours will bring things forward to the eye. Cool colours will make things go back. More water. That's a touch from what we already had there. Power of the red. Well, the power of the red is interesting because I'm just going to establish these these lines coming in. They're important as well. These uh, these guidelines are calling. They kind of lead your eye in. You don't need many of them. There we go. That'll do. Sometimes they can look a bit false. They're there. We just going to bring in some shadow there. I'm just going to talk about the power of the red. Which is red just makes makes your eyes go go towards um, go towards the red. Here we go on the shadow. Uh, this shadow is uh, Alizarin crimson and ultramarine with a very small touch of burnt sienna. Uh, I've got a couple of different mixes there because I don't want it all to be the same. a suggestion that there's something on the right hand side out, out of our view um, that's creating this shadow it's a classic device used by so many painters foreground shadow and I'm going to touch in some cad red in here along the along the boat I'll really get the eye going there because we had the two reds we had the reds of the bigger figures and we've got the red the small figure and now we've got a red in there and that'll really make the eye um, go towards there so I just want to work on some of the tonal values now could leave it and say that this is done but there are some bits and bobs there we go up here in the in the castle area and this is uh, bringing in some ultramarine alizal and crimson we've got a touch of burnt sienna going on and some burnt umber as well this mix is the uh, shadow mix which is Mainly Alizar and Crimson with some Ultramarine. And back again for clean water. Just touching the paper just to see if it's dry enough to do what I want to do. And there's clean water running again. Just trying to unify it in between these boats. I notice I'm leaving that patch of uh, light just to the just to the right of the figure, of the small uh, of the two figures in the in the boat. And this, you know, the light is light, dark as dark at the moment. You squint your eyes up, you can see that's clearly light as light, dark as dark. And it's always good to squint your eyes up if you want want to see what you're doing. It will it will just reduce things tonally down. So let's bulk up some of these shadows in the foreground. There we go. Let's, Got another couple of mixers in here. Alizarin, Ultramarine. It's going to be a touch of uh, burnt sienna on the right hand side as well to bring that forward. There we go. A 
I'm still trying to establish those lines, look. And then I love to use my fingers and paints, fingers and thumbs and palms of hands and backs of knuckles and just... Whatever works. I've not used my elbow yet though, but I might try that one day. So it's thumb in there, finger. Yeah, it's coming together now. So, getting at the end and just adding in some highlights um, around these figures on the right hand side. So this is just Chinese white straight out of the tube. Uh, it's thick liquid paint. And we'll fiddle around on here for a while. And I also want to get some movement on the arms and movement uh, with some dry brush from this white on the legs as well. trying to get some movement in there. Around the figures where I'd blotted out early on, if you remember, uh, with the tissue around these figures, I don't like that anymore now. I don't I don't think I need that. So those the blotting out that's around the head, I need to, to get rid of that as well because it's competing, not much, but a little bit, with, with that glow that's around the two figures in the boat. So because it's competing, I want to, you know, get rid of that so I'm gonna go back in there and sort it out. These flecks are sometimes called sparkle. Flecks of white. Notice I'm almost you know, just on the tip. This is a it's only the second brush I've used in this painting. The original one was the mop brush. And this is a number four uh, round. It's a synthetic from uh, Royal and Langnickel very cheap affordable little brushes I think they're Taclon synthetic they're great so I'm working on this left arm as well I think overall looking at this painting well uh, okay we're going to bring in the just a touch of white on the boat as well. Just, yep. Yeah. I tend to do that a lot, and I think, you know, there's quite a lot of painters do that. They, they kind of do one thing, and they go and then do it somewhere else, and do it somewhere else. It's, it's kind of creating the harmony, I guess. What I'm enjoying about the painting at the moment is the, the translucent washes especially in the beach there and on the rocks and around the boats and just the simplicity of it all. Um, this is just adding a little bit of sparkle. That's all we're doing. It's like creating the illusion of movement. Back in with some thicker mix. And that's it. And then, you know, well, the most satisfying bit really is to take off the tape. I love taking off the tape. It's when you can see, you know, you get the edge, that one inch edge around um, the painting. And it kind of gives it a, an instant mount and it just brings the whole thing to life. It's like, yeah, this looks like a painting. So this is the ta-da moment, the uh, most satisfying bit at the end. You've kind of done all the hard work you've got there. And now you can show off a bit. Go on. So, a bit more movement coming up. Uh, putting some birds around here. Uh, around the, the cliff, uh, the rocks and the castle. As I mentioned earlier, the um, unifying of, of these foreground figures. Um, and I worked around their heads to take out the uh, blotted highlight. So that's it. I hope you've uh, enjoyed that one and I'd come back real soon.